All right. So in this problem, it says g of x equals 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 7x minus 12. It asks us to find all of the zeros. All right? So we need to find all of the zeros for this problem. Guys, you probably need to make sure you understand looking up here. So, yeah, it's on page 81. So number 13, so looking at this one, the first thing we need to do, if asking us to find all the zeros, let's figure out what are all the possible rational zeros, right? So we apply our factors of p over q. Equals plus or minus 12, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, over plus or minus all the values of 2 and 1. So there's a lot of possible rational zeros, right? A lot of them. Now, if you guys look at this, I could list all the possible p's over q's, but do I even want to use all those? No. The best, p, the best rational zero, I know that 1 over 1 or 2 over 2, that's going to produce a rational zero of 1, right? So you always want to start at at least 1 and see if that's a rational zero. If 1 doesn't work, then try negative 1. So let's do 1, because I know that's at least a rational zero. But there's a lot of other rational zeros that if we need to, we'll try them. So let's do 1. So I have 2, 7, negative 7, and negative 12. So let's determine, let's see if 1 is a 0. Bring down the 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 7 plus 2 is 9. One times, 9 times 1 is 9. Negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Therefore, is 1 a 0? No. no. So let's try negative 1. All right, if you have a graphing calculator, you could already determine if 1 or, if one or negative 1 was a 0. If they were, then you just needed to prove it. But if not, you wouldn't even have to do this. But I don't have a graphic calculator with me, so I'm just going to I'm just going to do synthetic division to work them out. So I bring down the 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 7 plus negative 2, positive 5. 5 times negative 1, negative 5. Negative 12 plus negative 5 is going to be a um, negative 12. Negative 12 times uh, negative 1 is going to be a positive 12. Did I do all that correctly, 5? Yeah. So 1 does not work, right? Although it looked like 1 on the graph was 1, wasn't it? Didn't 1 look like 1? No, 1 was 1. It looked like negative 1 1 1 was, though. Let me just double check here. Yeah, negative 1 works. Let me see. 2, 7, negative 7. Oh, it's negative 12. I wrote it wrong, right? There you go. So that does work. I thought one of those was right. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you can see this is a factor, right? Negative 1 is a factor. I'm sorry, negative 1 is a 0. So now. You could say this. You could say g of x equals x plus 1. Since x minus 1 is a 0, that means x plus 1 is a factor, times 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. But now we need to figure out what are all of the zeros. So we need to determine, is this factorable? All right. So now we need to factor 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. We know that negative 1 is a 0. Now we need to determine what are all the zeros from this. So we need to factor this. So you could say, all right, negative 24, positive 5. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 24, add to give you 5? 8 and 3. Yeah, so you could say x, you could say um, 2x squared plus 8x minus 3x minus 12, right? Won't that work? Those two numbers, so you could say 8 and negative 3. Multiply to give you negative 24, add to give you 5. Then we factor now by grouping. So now what we can do is factor out a 2, uh, 2x. That's going to leave with an x plus 4. Here I can factor out um, a, let's factor out a negative 3. So when I factor out a negative 3, I'm going to leave what be left with a x plus 4. So if I factor on a negative 3, um, now I'm going to live with x minus 4, x plus 4. So now I'm left with x plus 4 times 2x minus 3. Mm 
then we can now go ahead and solve by looking at this graph. Um, doesn't seem like, oh, x equals negative 4. And so now solving this, so now I said this factored out, and then I could say my other factor is x plus 1. So do you guys see how this times this times this is now going to give you g of x? No? Yes? So do you guys see what I did? I found one rational 0, which was negative 1. I factored it to get to this. If you couldn't factor it, you'd have to use the quadratic formula like we did in the last problem. I can factor it. So I factored it down to this. Now that we have all the factors, can we find all the zeros? Yes. Now you set this equal to 0, and you say x plus 1 times x plus 4 times 2x minus 3. So therefore, you could say x plus 1 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0, and 2x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 1, x equals negative 4, and x equals 3 halves. So when you look in your calculator, you can see there's three zeros. And guess what? Are all these rational zeros in our test? Yeah, you could have had negative 4 over 1, and you also could have done a 3 over 2. So these are all rational, possible rational zeros. But all we did was we just used, utilized our easiest ones that we worked on, Japonica, and then we solved for this. Okay? Guys, mathematics is very difficult in its own. If you're not paying attention.